Wipro. Do business better. This is the GTB Wipro Mobile World Congress TV Special Episode 3. I'm Brian Dolby and I'm joined by John Hindle, Director Worldwide Service Provider Field Marketing at Cisco and Julio Alonso Lopez, Vice President of IP Systems at Ericsson. John, what needs to be done to accelerate time to market in your view? Thanks Brian. So I think there's a, there's a couple of ways of approaching this question. So there's the, what do we need to do in terms of the network infrastructure to make it simpler to configure things in? If we look back over the, the history of telecoms, you know, we started off with fairly static systems that needed a lot of reprogram every time you wanted to add something. What I think we're seeing a lot of operators look at now is how do they virtualize the network to make it easier to introduce applications into that network. The second aspect that certainly we found working with a lot of our customers is really how do we help them build a go-to-market model. So there's a lot of new services being thought of, being developed, a lot of new players coming into the market, over the top players um, generate a lot of interest. But how do we create something that can stimulate a consumer, st stimulate a, an enterprise or a business? So a lot of what Cisco does is balance both of those aspects. Not just looking at how we improve the, the technology platform, but how do we then leverage our channels to multiple markets to partner with the service provider to take those applications into market? And I think both have to be addressed if we're going to be successful. Yeah, interesting. Julia, what's your view on that? I mean, I basically agree that this, we need to take this in multiple dimensions. I mean, one is the technology dimension, another one is how we introduce this technology into the network, and the third one is actually how we you know, bring this technology towards the end customer. I mean, we definitely see the pressure from our customers to introduce these new services faster, and I think there is, we have the right momentum to actually, you know, and the right kind of circumstances to make sure that this happens much faster than has happened in the past. And we have seen that introduce new services, in particular with service providers, at times has been a process quite lengthy, and we see that that's, that's that's going to change going forward. So if you were an investor, are you going to be looking at uh, providers who've actually got a lot of software in their network rather than a lot of old legacy equipment? What's your advice on that? My personal advice is that we definitely, I mean, uh, we are at the peak of the hype about SDN, uh, software control networks. Still believe there is going to be quite a bit of investment in, you know, legacy hardware systems. And, you know, we definitely see that, uh, you know, having customized hardware in particular sets gives that extra performance and that extra differentiation that, you know, uh, a lot of our customers need. Yeah, what's your view on that, John? So, so I think you, you can't decouple one from the other. So clearly the, the way networks are being deployed is becoming more programmer. So Julio rightly points out um, concepts like software-defined networks, where we're looking at taking the programmability aspects of that to allow us to introduce things more quickly into the market. And it goes back to the first point we made about uh, time to revenue. But you st as we see traffic growing constantly in the network and visual traffic, video traffic, um, you still need solid hardware platforms to base this on. So you can't build a huge road infrastructure without good solid roads. It's, it's all well and good having the best trains in the world, but if you don't have tracks to run them on, then the whole thing falls to pieces. So I think that the two things are balanced in terms of that, that change to more application and software-centric networking, but without that underlying platform that can, can deal with those heavy loads of traffic, you've got a, a weak foundation to build a business on, and that's really the important thing. It's the business that we're building, not just the technology. Yeah, and, and again, very important at that is the standardization and, and security and all those things. But yeah. while we want all those things, do you think there's a danger they might stifle this growth? No, I don't, actually. Because I, I think that the, the word standardization I, has changed over a number of years. I've been in the industry just over 30 years, and there used to be a nice four-year standard cycle in Etsy, and things were very, very controlled. As we look to the, the concept of standardization in bodies like the IETF, they're not so much standards, but really let's get people together who can agree on making something work, and if we get to critical mass, then let's move forward. But if you don't have standards, if everybody's smartphone works in a different way, then it kills stimulation. So there's a balance between just enough standardization at the right levels in the network to allow people to, to grow in the industry versus defining everything to the point where nobody can actually move forward. And as we were talking earlier about the nature of the industry and how it's changed over the last 10, 15, 20 years, we were talking about sort of Hollywood becoming part of 
the Mobile World Congress experience. You know, you couldn't have seen that happening if we stuck to the old model. So I, I would strongly say innovation's happening. It's happening incredibly quickly. The challenge is keeping up with it sometimes. Yeah, that is a very good point. I mean, keeping up with it is the key. And we talked about network capacity as well, another key area. I mean, you know, what, what's your view on that? I mean, it's quite obvious that network capacity is a must for, uh, you know, all the serious service providers. We see an explosion of data, an explosion of signaling, which is sometimes that, you know, we are always miss. A uh, big part of, the, you know, the traffic that has been generated by the smartphones is not actually like data traffic, but signaling. So we basically need to build uh, networks that are scalable, uh, networks that are smart, networks that can handle, you know, this explosion of traffic, both, as I said, data and, and, and signaling, actually. I was talking to uh, one of the European Commission working groups recently. They've got a special project. They reckon that they need to build a new network that's 100 times the capacity of today's network. It sounds like, from what we're talking here, they're about right. Well, the history of telecom says whatever you predict will exceed it. So 100 times, when we get to 100 times, I suspect it'll be more. And I think that's because, as I say, we go back to that innovation, the way people are using the networks. We've been looking within Cisco around the internet of everything. So we estimate there's less than 1% of things connected today that will ultimately be connected to the networks. So we've connected the first five and a half billion people to the mobile network. But if you think about devices, cars, even trees, we did a, we did a little bit of a, you know, some fairly creative activities. And we talked about trees being connected to the internet. And everybody smiled and laughed and said, well, that's quite ridiculous, but it's an interesting brainstorming exercise. And then somebody said, but in the UK, we've got a problem with the ash trees, there's some sickness. They're starting to put sensors on trees to monitor them and feed back. So instantly, what seemed like the, probably one of the silliest applications actually became very real very quickly. So I think you know, the, the, the growth of the network, is it 100 times? When we get to 100, I suspect somebody will want to go another 100 again. So I, I, I just think we're, so I sometimes feel we're just at the start somehow. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, I mean the Internet of Things I guess has been on the subject of a few meetings at your place, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, Internet of Things, we have that very similar concept. We talk about, you know, 50 billion connections. I mean, we basically talk about that everything that will benefit from being connected will be connected. And that's something that, you know, we're starting to see today. I mean, you know, it has taken us, like, what, 20, 30 years to connect 5 billion people using cell phones. It's going to take us much less to connect 50 billion of things. And we need to build a network that actually uh, can uh, scale in that way, can sustain that type of traffic. And as I said, it's not, I, I don't think it's going to be just the throughput. It's a lot of other things that will drive this network architecture. So, so with all the software out there in the network, should vendors like yourselves, you know, be focused on applications and services almost totally? Where, where do you think you should put the focus? Well, I, I don't think we have invented yet software that runs without hardware. So uh, definitely, I mean, it's still hardware is something that is going to be there. It will evolve, and you know, in, in different pieces of, in different parts of the network, we probably need, uh, you know, more standard or more customized hardware. But I still believe that vendors like us will have a, a drive to differentiate also through hardware. So I mean, our view is that hardware still will be a factor moving forward in this in this new network. And you, John? Yeah, I completely. Uh, Julio makes the, the absolute critical point. You can't have software that without hardware to run it on. But I think we've got to think about what do we want that software to do. So a lot of our customers are saying to us, our business is changing fundamentally. You know, we're not a minute or pipe provider. We're becoming a business to business provider, a B two B to C provider. Help us understand what that means. So I think the interest is around the software and applications that enable those uh, the, the innovation, that stimulation of new business new applications but you know should vendors become those application providers I think the industry moves so fast we see our role as enabling that to take place how do you um, manage the network how do you monetize the network but it's moving so fast why would you not tap into the hundred million five hundred million developers that are out there innovating every day all day so I think it's it's, you know, it's applications and software with a view to why you're doing that, not just for, for the sake of it itself. When we crack all these issues and we've got these super faster networks, who's going to benefit the most? Well, I would argue we, we have those faster networks today. So, you know, again, I've been around the industry for a long time. Networks are faster, they're more flexible, they're more robust. But I think this is it's a fundamental underpinning of 
every country's economy. So I think everybody benefits, just from, from general citizens to business, in terms of the way we do business, to the environment. So one way to get people off the roads is to say you don't have to get on the roads to go and meet people. So you can start to think of the environmental issues that are becoming ever increasingly important. They're bubbling up more and more every day. The economic issues around people um, being able to, to commute and maybe work in a completely different country. I, I, I actually work for a San Jose manager, but I live in the UK and I have people who work in Singapore. So the nature of the way in which we work today is completely changing. You, you still have issues of time zones, that's a human element. But I think that the, the platform is there for, for the benefit of all. I can't really see too many negatives. And I always remind people, you know, you can always switch it off. Yeah, but, but can we? I don't know whether we oh, can. Well, there you, that's that's, that's actually the, 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 um, the, the motivation of each individual user. Maybe we don't want to switch it off, but you still can if you really want to. So, What about you, Julia? What do you think about, about these new wonder networks we're going to have? Well, first of all, I want to say that I have a problem switching it off and <laughs> not being connected permanently. But I mean, yes, yes, to emphasize in that, I think everybody will benefit from these networks. I mean, the individual persons, the companies, the governments, uh, I mean, it's, it's definitely a, an improvement for, for the whole society. We see, you know, as a revenue generator, not just for the for the people in, in this industry, but in all industries. And, you know, I think uh, we really, really are working towards this network society, which I think is going to happen very quickly. OK, well, we better check how many messages we've missed them while we've been there talking. But in the meantime, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Wipro. Do business better.